got him. You're doing great. That's a speed spoon. We just, we just got off a massive tangle, guys. So I had an orange speed spoon and this clown colored one. So I guess I put the right one back on. There you go. Howdy guys, Cal Kellogg here. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're not already a subscriber, please take a second to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. And you'll always know when I'm here on YouTube talking trout fishing tactics. And that's what I'm gonna talk about right now. I'm gonna show you what I've been pulling to catch fish over the past week. Now, I opened with footage of that big old six or seven pound trout. Got that fish power trolling fairly early in the morning on one of my speed spoons one of those right right there one of the pro colored ones um what my strategy has been you know you could see i got some snow on the ground here the weather's been changing on a dime all day i had sun i got my sunglasses on it was raining it was snowing weather is changing on a dime and so is the temperament of the fish we're coming off a very robust winter um we're transitioning into spring and uh, you know, the conditions on the water are changing really quickly and that is affecting the bite. Early in the morning, when the temperature's down, the trout tend to be more lethargic. And you would think, you know, Kel's dealing with lethargic fish, he's gonna start out trolling slower. That's not what I've been doing. I've been starting off with the fast stuff. My number one lures for fast trolling last week were my speed spoons in gold and the pro colors as well as a white or yellow um, uh, magnum metal head right there. Um, I'll run those lures quickly anywhere from two seven all the way up to three and a half miles an hour early in the morning and I, I cover as much ground as I possibly can. What I'm looking for is the very small minority of fish that are active that are willing to chase. And I have a, a, a better, you know, a better shot at finding those fish if I stay in the move and I move quickly. Um, you know, I got that fish, I got the fish that you saw in the video, we were trolling at about three and a half miles an hour. That particular day, um, we had hooked one fish earlier, earlier, a nice fish, don't know what it was, it was a good sized fish, don't think it was as big as that six or seven pounder, whatever that one weighed, um, but we lost it before we could see it. We got that one on the fly, down about 10 feet, um, and then that big fish came probably two feet deep. I was top lining the speed spoon about 185 feet back. I was coming around a corner. I was in a bottleneck. There was some structure to my side. So that's the kind of place where you'd expect to find a big fish that was out cruising that was looking for something to eat. So for that work, the speed spoons and the flies have been working well. I've played with uh, my plugs, um, Yozuri's, um, Rapala's, stuff like that. Um, the maglip, the maglip bite slowed down. I haven't got anything on plugs. It's been all about flies and spoons for me recently. Spoons up top in the water column and the flies just a little bit deeper. And again, speed 2.7 to 3.5. If you're dealing with stained water, don't let it affect your thinking. The challenge you're up against right now is temperature, 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 and temperature fluctuations. That's what's making the bite, you know, go up and down. They'll find your lure in that stained water. It's been stained for a long enough period of time now that they're used to it. They can find that bait. It's the temperature going up and down and up and down that is affecting the bite. Now, later in the day, 
typically about 11 o'clock if I've got some fair weather and I don't have a lot of wind. If I have a lot of wind, I can't get the temperature to rise very much. It keeps upwelling that colder water. Temperature tends to stay down. And a lot of times, you know, I'll, I'll stick with the fast trolling longer. But in, on a calm day, on a fair day, I start to see that temperature, you know, spike up from 48 or 49 to 50, 51. I saw it go all the way up to 54 degrees this week. And when that happens, I really cut down the area I'm fishing. I've got three or four different areas that are holding a lot of trout. When I start to see that temperature elevate, I see the fish start to elevate in the water column. I slow down and I grind. Um, and I've been getting them on a, a small variety of offerings. The standard size metal heads like that one right there, those are working very well right under the surface, say zero to, I don't know, maybe three or four feet deep. I'm top lining them on a long line, 185, 200 feet behind the boat. 1.8 miles an hour is my target speed. I might, you know, drop it down to 1.5 at times, bump it up to 2.2, two, but to 1.8's been the target. Orange has been good. Olive and white has been good for me. Um, anywhere from 11 o'clock in the morning to two in the afternoon. Once you hit about two or three, sun gets lower in the sky, temp starts to decline, and the bite tends to kind of tail off. So the flies have been working well. The other two things that have been working really well, I gotta grab them here, I'll be right back. I'm back. The other two things that have been working really well for me are my soft plastics, both my Trout Tricks worm right there and my Trigger Minnow right there. Um, Trout Tricks in pink, Trigger Minnow in orange. These have been working well. Um, I haven't been fishing these on the surface. I've been fishing these anywhere from six to 12 feet deep, sometimes down to 15. I'm putting on Trophy Trout Procure Super Gel on both of these baits. I'm running them with the action disc. I make sure I get the hook way back in the worm because I am getting a lot, of, a lot of nippers out there. They'll come in and they'll nip at the tail of the worm. They'll nip at the tail of the minnow. If the hook's not you know, back in the bait, I get a short strike. If I get that hook back in a bait, a lot of times that hook is looping around the lower jaw, fish on, fish in the box. Right now, I did the numbers. I'm landing about 80% of the fish that I hook, you know, of all sizes, whether they're big or small, pan size, whatever, medium size. And I attribute that to attention to detail. I know they're gonna be nipping. I get those hooks back in the soft plastic stuff, and I've been running that stinger hook on the flies been working very well with the spoons you don't have that problem the first thing they grab when they get the back of the spoon is the hook now i want to say a few words about my speed spoon versus the speedy shiner i'll be right back let me grab a couple of those lures okay guys i'm back if you've been watching the channel for a while you know i'm really really passionate about power trolling and i'm really passionate about my speed spoons. You saw what these spoons can do in the beginning of this video. Big old trophy trout for that young man. Nuff said. Let's compare the two lures. The beloved Speedy Shiner, right there, great lure. I have caught many hundreds of trout on the Speedy Shiner. And uh, there is the speed spoon. They're very similar in length, okay? Advantage number one that the speed spoon gives you. It comes with a red number four treble. Look at that tiny little bronze treble. Not only is the hook small and the wire light, it's not red, so it doesn't give the fish a defined target to strike at. So advantage number one goes to my speed spoon. Advantage number two, look at my beautiful UV finish. Rainbow trout versus frog. I mean, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I think my finishes absolute blow away the finishes you see on the Speedy Shiner. Finally, we come to utility. This is a trolling lure. You can troll it. It only weighs a sixth of an ounce. Look how thin that is. You can't really cast it efficiently. I dropped it, I'll be right back. Okay, I have returned. Um, you can't really cast the Speedy Shiner efficiently. You can't jig with the Speedy Shiner efficiently. It just doesn't have the weight. Let's contrast that with my speed spoon. The speed spoon is made of brass. It weighs a full one half ounce. You can jig with it. It's an outstanding jigging spoon. You can cast it in a stream. You can cast it from the shore at a lake. To me, there is no 
comparison. If you're looking for maximum utility, maximum versatility, if you're looking for a deadly spoon that you can you know, work quickly, you can troll quickly, you can jig, you can cast, you can do all that kind of stuff with, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com and pick up a set of my speed spoons. We offer them in the UV Pro colors and we also offer them in the standard metallic and painted colors. And in our painted selection, we are now offering a bright pink speed spoon. I'm Kel Kellogg. Get yourself some speed spoons. Get out there, troll fast, and get ready to yell fish on. You saw what they can do in the beginning of this video. I wouldn't lead you astray. I'm Kel Kellogg. You'll find everything I just talked about, except the speedy shiner, at fishhuntshoot.com. I'll see you out on the water. Please hang up and try again.